Hi everyone. So in this video, we're going to create the animation that you're seeing playing back on the screen as we speak. So to do this, we're going to animate some type and uh, then we're also going to use mash uh, to create the trails behind our flipping type. So let's get started. Um, here we are in a scene. I have animated the type, but don't worry, I'll go through how I've done that. So uh, yeah, just play that back and yeah, that's what you've got. Um, apologies for the slow playback uh, when I'm recording uh, HD um, screen res, my playback in my slows to a crawl. Um, so uh, yes, how did we, how did I animate this type? Um, okay, so I'm just going to hide this for a second and I'm going to create some, some new type and just um, wait for the type node to appear and I'll type in trails, if I can spell it right. And then I'll change the font. Okay, so um, uh, if I just right click here, go assign existing material and then choose um, ramp shader. Here is our type. There you go. And um, uh, the ramp shader is just giving a red to the front and then gray down the sides. Um, I can show you that if you want to see it. It's just looks like this. Gray, red, and then color input set to facing angle. Uh, okay, so um, back on the type. Um, if to animate this, what we need to do is just nip on over to the animation tab, uh, enable animation here, and then let's set a keyframe on frame one, uh, say like that, and then another one on say frame 25, um, say, ooh, I don't know, I don't know how high I want to go. 18 and then uh, one on 12 and we'll say um, uh, oh wait I've done this wrong haven't I I think I want it to be up here on frame 12 or 13 and then 25 I want it to be back down at the bottom like that okay so if I play this back we have this and the delay frames is controlled here, so you can also you can reverse the order that this happens in. So if I reverse that, then the S will go first and the L, and that kind of thing. Or you can randomize it so the letters go randomly. So it's pretty cool. Um, so yes, yeah, just go through that. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, I don't want this reversed at all. Um, so we got this. Cool. Um, right, so we also want them to flip over. Now, I think that that is going to be... Yes, it is. It's going to be the x-axis. So if I animate this uh, from frame zero um, on zero to 360 here like that we've got this okay now um, now the the fun thing uh, is messing with all of the keyframes so um, uh, yeah you might want to skip forwards if you <laughs> if this kind of thing bores you um, so I'm just gonna um, change this to like very basic animation kind of um, rapid acceleration, slow deceleration kind of thing. So um, if I just do that kind of thing, so that's a flip. And then um, I'm going to flatten out the, the jump so that we get high quickly and we stay high. So kind of like we, we go up to the top, we kind of stay there for a little bit and then we drop down again. So, um, and then I want um, this to be kind of come back down to earth with a thud, something like that. And then what we'll do is we'll use the insert key tool and we'll just add another couple of keyframes. I don't know, something like there and then another one maybe there and then another one say there. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna grab this keyframe here and I'm going to break the tangent and then I'm going to grab this handle and I'm going to bring it up like this. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna break all of these in fact. And I'm just gonna create this kind of bouncing motion as it comes back down to earth. Something like that, and then a tiny little bounce at the end. Okay, I have absolutely no idea whether this is going to look any good. Um, let's find out. So, uh, just going to go back and then we hit play. Well, yeah, so the, the bounces are too big at the end. Um, Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, I'm just, <laughs> I'm playing with the uh, I'm playing with the keyframes under the monitor, knowing full well I'm actually just going to hide this and show the one that I finished earlier. If you want to see the um, see the keyframes, they look like this, and then the um, spin looks like that. Okay, so um, very basic and 
there you go. Okay, so um, now that we have our animating text, let's uh, create a mash network. So I'm going to create a mash network, and I'm going to place the mash points over this uh, over the mesh here, and then I'm going to emit trails from the mash points. So uh, we need a, we need a dummy mash piece of geometry. Um, well, we don't, <laughs> but um, in order to, for you to see what's going on, I'm going to create one. So I'm just going to grab a cube, and I'm going to go create mash, create mash network, uh, which is going to create our standard ten points uh, distributed down the x-axis, like so. You can see them down here, and I'm going to scroll down to mesh settings and I'm going to open mesh settings and then I'm going to drag and drop the type mesh onto the input mesh like so which is just going to kind of scatter our 10 mesh points over the surface of our um, of our type okay so uh, we don't actually want to do this what I want to um, to happen is I want the type to I want the trails to emit from the sides of the type and at the moment we've got points on the surfaces and that's just because we're scattering them over randomly so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scatter them on random vertices now if I um, just turn on wireframe no sorry I did that uh, what I really wanted was um, this so um, yeah, you can see that there are there are no verts on the inside the front face. Uh, there are just uh, verts. You can see some down the side here, and then some along here. Obviously, if I just uh, do vertex vertices, um, you can see all, where all the verts are. So we're just kind of picking random verts, and we're displaying the text on those random verts. So um, I you, you may already have noticed a problem with this, and I will fix that in a moment. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to go over to the um, waiter here. And I'm going to add a trails node. So just add a trails node, and at this point, I can get the, grab the repro mesh here, and I can just hide it. So if I select the trails, it's just so we can see it more easily, and then I hit play, you can see that we are generating trails. Okay. So um, as you may have noticed, the trails aren't disappearing when um, when our objects have stopped animating and that's because by default they won't you have to turn on this decay trails button so as soon as we do that and I play through this again the trails will kind of disappear to nothing which is pretty cool okay um, yeah so that's done and um, then let's go back and fix the fact that most of these trails are appearing on the letter S as you'll see that T has one, R's got a few more, um, L's got one, the S has loads and the reason for this is there are, there are just more vertices on the S than there are on the T and that's why more are appearing so we can fix that um, we can add verts to the T to make it look more like the S and the way that we can do that is by using a deformable type. So if we go to um, the type, um, if we go to the type node, um, which is here, and let's just go focus uh, type, I'll do it too, um, and into the geometry tab, mesh settings, deformable type, we can, uh, if we hit click deformable type here, um, oh, I've picked the wrong, I've picked the wrong type, sorry, I've picked the wrong object. Uh, type 1 is what we want to do, deformable type. So um, you can see that we, a load of vertices have appeared on the faces here. We do not want that, but what we do want are these verts that have appeared down the side. So if I just turn that off and turn it on again, you'll notice that a couple more uh, points appear down the side here. We can actually um, make more of those appear by reducing this edge length here. So if I keep reducing the edge length, we are um, going to get, oh, I just need to um, hide the trails for a second actually, just so we don't get the geometry messing up um, yeah you can see that um, we've created loads of edges down the side here which means that we are about as densely populated as the S or nearer anyway so um, yeah uh, so let's say that this is about right maybe do maybe do the, yeah let's just say that this is about right okay um, so the problem is we have all of these divisions on the face and we do not want this so two ways to get rid of this first of all we could just delete caps but there is a trick and I'm going to show you because you might not want to delete caps I'm going to go over to the poly remesh node which is the node that's adding all of these faces um, and we're going to go over here and we're going to bring open node behavior and we're going to say has no effect what that means is we have all the divisions down the side of the mesh, but we have none of the uh, remeshing happening on the caps here. 
and that is a cool little trick that you can use. So I'm going to turn off wireframe display now and when I unhide my trails and hit six to get my materials back. Oh, what's going on? Why have I lost my material on this? Um, someone's screaming at their monitor. Why have I... Uh, no, used default material turned on like a chump. Um, <laughs> let's let's rewind this. Okay, so now um, when I select the trails, you'll see that we have a very even number of trails on each object, except the L for some reason. Uh, let's uh, let's just unhide our repro mesh and just check out what's going on. So this could just be a random seed thing. So let's go to the mesh network and then go on the distribute node and we'll just change our random seed down here. And that is a random seed thing. So now we have uh, points appearing. So we've created this mesh just because I've been moving all the points around and trails is following where they were. So um, uh, let's just uh, rewind back to the beginning. I'm going to uh, hide the repro mesh and then well, let's play back. So let's do that. Um, you won't be able to see the trails mesh here, so let's do that. Select it so you can see it, and there you go. So we've got an even number kind of um, on each shape. So uh, the trails look rubbish, so let's um, add a profile curve to them. And to get the profile curve onto the trails, you just need to middle mouse drag it onto the trails, like so. And then we're going to just scale this down a little bit. Uh, by default, we have this taper. So we taper from uh, just, it's just a flat taper um, from a shape to nothing. So you can change the shape size of that taper just by doing this. So we've got more of a convex taper going on. Um, and then I'm going to texture the, well, I'll probably just add the same ramp shader to the, um, uh, to the trails. So let's just uh, rewind and then hit play again. And that is our result. Now our trail length is set to about 25 and we probably want this to be a lot shorter. So if I just play this back now with its shorter trails, I'll just deselect that. Probably want to increase the width of these maybe slightly. Let's try that. Whoops. Set the trails node. Right, where are you? Here you are. Nope, there you are. I was on it. I'm just going to turn this width up a little bit. Cool, okay, so um, that is basically what I was after. Um, and I actually think the material I gave these trails in the video that we saw was um, incandescent, lumin like a luminescent material. Um, so um, yes, that's probably, you probably want something like that on it. So if I just bring up QuickTime, play back again, yeah. So it was, uh, it was um, a glowing red material. Uh, so yeah, that is how you go and add, um, how you add uh, trails to some text. I uh, hope you found it useful.